good day to all so today's topic is about some of the marine electrical questions and with answers or discussed some of the questions are like why we prefer ac on board what is the difference between ac and dc why transformers and generators are rated in kva what is active and reactive powers what is circuit breaker and what are its types what will happen if the motor is getting uh, flooded with seawater so how to do the maintenance work and after it is getting flooded and what is the alternative maintenance and how the fluorescent lamp is uh, low pressure mercury vapor lamp is working so some of the important questions are taken and it is discussed in this lecture so we'll go for the first slide the first slide is about what is the difference between ac and dc normally when we talk about ac ac is having different magnitude and different direction so whenever we draw a graph we have to mark which one is x axis and what is y axis so we will have just time as an x axis and voltage in the amplitude or voltage in the y axis so this is ac alternating current so this alternating current is having different magnitude it's not a uh, common magnitude we have different magnitudes plus minus different magnitudes different directions we have positives and negatives we have high and low we have zero point also so this is alternating current which has different magnitude different direction but dc is having only one magnitude and one direction it is a constant supply one magnitude and one direction so ac machines are smaller lighter compact in size and the designing of ac machines is very smaller so on board ship if it is smaller and lighter and compact in size they can take more cargoes on board so it is preferred much for ac machines so ac machines are smaller lighter compact in size as compared to dc machines are bigger in size dc machines are bigger in size so ac voltage can be easily generated stepped up or stepped down by using a device which is a transformer which is very cheap and uh, less maintenance so ac voltage is easy to generate easy to distribute to all the feeders and it is very cheap and less maintenance but when we compare it with dc dc generator dynamos requires commutators so this commutators and these components requires lot of maintenance to produce dc and uh, ac can be easily converted to dc by a device which is rectifier ac to dc converter diode is used to convert it but uh, for dc solid state converters for any conversion if it is required we have to go for solid state converters power electronic converters so or rotary converters used which have more maintenance and if this power electronic devices or are uh, getting damaged and it it takes lot of maintenance and time to work on it so that is very difficult for dc and ac we can say it has 50 hertz or 60 hertz 60 hertz is on board frequency and for dc uh, the frequency is zero we all know about it and now we can go for the next slide next slide ac is having zeros so in this ac sign we have zeros so that is easy to interrupt during the fault the meaning is um, ac contactor switch gears circuit breakers or ec to install and the quenching of the fault current or short circuit current is very easy in ac because ac is having zeros in that particular zero position the circuit breaker will quench the fault current easily the circuit breaker which is consists consist of this arcing compartment which is made up of porcelain material that will quench the ac at the zero potential by increasing the length of the arc at exact to the zero potential it will quench it very easily but when you compare it with dc dc short circuit current and fault current is very high as we know also when wants to quench 
there is no zero potential there is no zeros in uh, ac so what will happen it may produce some spark or arc arcing can be formed when arcing is formed and that is creating the risk of fire when it takes the cargoes like coal wood and textile which is a very important point to be noted if the cargoes are taking coal wood and textile then extra effort has to be taken to protect these cargoes if a dc interrupter is producing arcing so extra safety is required for that so interruption of this fault uh, is very easy for ac and uh, it is very less cost and easy to install as compared to ac switch gears and reduction of ac leakage current is easy than dc and balancing of the circuit so with fault leakage currents so these things are very easy to detect but in for dc there is no standard ground fault circuit interrupter we have must use a special equipments so as ac obtained from ac generators and mains so ac we will get from uh, generators and main but dc can be stored and can be got from cell or a battery and battery has to be uh, maintained properly to get the supply at any time so dc is from cell or battery can be used so power factor lies between 0 and 1 for ac and power factor is always 1 for dc ac used can be used in single phase or three phase it can be used as refrigeration fans lights in all uh, single and three phases dc is used for leds mostly on board torch light mostly smaller feed away cell ferries uh, some unmanned ship with a full battery grid power supply so unmanned ship which is having a battery grid power supplies are used with dc so now we can i think hope might have understood uh, clear about what is ac and dc and why they prefer ac on board the main reason is the ac machines are smaller in size so it is uh, very compact and easy to maintain and lighter weight so the remaining we can get lot of spaces for cargoes and uh, ac machine fault interruption is very easy and uh, very easy to find the fault and the designing of the circuit breaker and the switch gears is very costless and easy to install so these are the main reason why they keep ac in dc uh, the interruption may take place arc so the interruption if it is producing arc and if the cargoes are uh, combustion that is like coal wood or textile so that is very danger so we have to go for extra safety so these are the special reasons why they say uh, prefer ac mostly so we can go for the next slide next is what is circuit breaker what is circuit breaker and what is the types of circuit breaker so for this circuit breaker uh, it is a protecting device we can say it as a switching device so which interrupts the faulty current and performs the function of a switch thus protecting the electrical equipment from damage it can be reused also so it can be reused and mostly it is connected with your uh, bus tie bar and with your generator so it can be easily closed and opened so it is a switching device opening and closing a device under the fault conditions so it is easy to perform and again it can be reused that is the circuit breaker and what are the types of circuit breaker for low voltage generators circuit breakers of distribution is about from 600 to 6000 amperes on board ship we use acbs that is air circuit breaker for lv generators for low voltage and for hv generators for high voltage generators generally for 3.3 kv 6.6 and 11 kv we use vacuum interrupter circuit breaker and gas filled sulfur hexafluoride sf6 circuit breakers so like ships which is taking lpg lng or fuel production ships or cruise liners uh, hv systems requires um, the circuit breakers like vacuum interrupters and uh, gas filled uh, sulfur hexafluoride circuit breakers for low voltage we can use acbs so i hope you understood about this circuit breakers
So we can go for the next after erasing this. We can go for the next. Yes. Next slide is uh, why the generator and transformers are rated in KVA. So generally, transformers are rated in KVA. On board ship, mostly the uh, transformers, generators, the protecting devices, all rated in KVA. So why transformers are rated in KVA? First reason we can say that the losses of the transformer, the losses of the transformer depends upon the voltage and the current. So voltage is by the ion loss. Ion loss is the constant loss that is from your uh, uh, eddy current hysteresis loss and the core loss. And about the uh, current loss, current loss is by the copper loss. So copper loss is I square R loss. So the transformer depends upon these two losses, voltage and ampere, that is uh, uh, current and voltage. So we say it rate in KVA, not in uh, KW. And the second reason why transformer is rated in KVA is actually uh, transformer manufacturer does not know what is the load to be taken for a transformer. Suppose if it is a transformer, uh, if the transformer is taking a resistive load, suppose if I am connecting with a resistive load, I can say that uh, whatever the power is given, the power is fully consumed by the resistive load. For example, I can take a resistive load as a, um, like oven or a heater, room heaters, so, yellow yeah, equipment like so it fully consumes the active power. So if it fully consumes the active power, then it is called as unity power factor. Then I can say it as KW. If it fully consumes the power, then I can say it as KW. But we, the manufacturer does not know what is the load of the transformer. The load can be RLC loads. If the transformer is taking uh, uh, inductive load. Suppose we are connecting with an induction motor. The induction motor is having inductive loads as well as the resistive load. It is a combination of uh, loads. R, L, C combinations of loads. So in this case, we can say it as a uh, reactive power. Reactive power is the inductive load will produce a reactive power. The power which is given from the source is not fully consumed by the load. Instead of fully consumed by the load, it started to uh, send it from the load to the source. It again opposes to the source. So that is, that is it is having a reverse flow. So that, that is called a reactive power. So this reactive power, the phase are some of the active power and the reactive power. The phase are some of the active power and the reactive power, KVAR. So this will give you KVA. This will give you an apparent power, which is called as KVA. So this is the second reason why we say the transformer is rated in KVA. So first reason is, is about the losses. The transformer losses depends upon voltage and current. Voltage is by the, voltage is by the, uh, this is ion loss. And the current is by I square or copper loss. So this will decide about the transformer loss. The second case is we don't know what is the um, load which is connected to the transformer. The RLC load is not no uh, it is not a pure resistive load it is a pure resistive load we can say it is unity power factor whatever the uh, power is given is fully consumed by the resistive load there is no return flow but inductive load suppose we connect with the motor the motor is having inductive load as well as the resistive load so it will produce a reactive power that is the phase or sum of the reactive and the active power, we say it as an apparent power. So they rate it as KVA. So this is the actual reason why generators and transformers are rated in KVA. So in actual practice, we say this, those electrical devices which act as a source, such as alternator transformers always rated in KVA to make their operation independent of the load power factor. So if it depends upon the power factor, 
So power factor will be keep very. We cannot make a constant power factor. So that's it. So power factor is uh, uh, depends upon what is the load. So that is keep changing. While the electrical devices which act as the load, example motor, motor is always rated in kW because it is a mechanical power and draws the current from the source according to their power factor. It only draws the current from the source. But here what is happening is some of the power is becoming reactive and it is again opposing to the source. So that is the reason why they say why alternators and transformers and about active and reactive power, about the power factor leading and lagging, I have given a separate lecture. So in my next slide, I'll show next slide. Uh, the question is about what is reactive active powers. So for that, I have a separate lecture. So when you go and uh, listen to that lecture, it will be much clearer because that is fully explained there with all waveforms and other diagrams. Here I have only pointed the points and they have discussed about it. And this is what is active and reactive power. So please watch this link so you can understand But I have given all what is caused by, what is unity power factor, what is lagging power factor, uh, what is power triangle, all was fully explained in this link. Please go and watch for further clarity. I hope the previous one is clarified, but still more if you want for the clarification, you can see this for better understanding. Next, we can go for the next. What is electrostatic charge and how to prevent this on board? Electrostatic charge. Static is at the charge which is at the rest. So, we know some formulas like uh, laws, we say it like uh, same charges will repel each other and unlike charges will attract each other. So, there is a movement of charge. So, the electricity means the flow of electron in a conductor. Electricity is a flow of electron. But if the electrons is at rest, that is static charge. So, whenever there is a friction between two non-metals, uh, insulators, Suppose here they have given one example. So I have given one example. The charges come from a balloon is kept and a piece of wool is kept. When this is having some friction, the ions is getting transferred. The electrons are pulled from the wool to the balloon. The electrons are pulled from the wool to the balloon. So it is getting transferred. The balloon has more electrons usual. So now it has become more electrons. So the, now the balloon is negatively charged and the wool is positively charged. So it becomes static now. So this is static charge and it, it starts to now uh, attract. Suppose we can see uh, combing the hair. Combing the hair and if you take the comb near to some bits of paper, the bits of paper will get attracted. There is a static charge. There is a deficiency of some ions and there is the more in some some not metals also so because of some friction this charges is uh, uh, getting pulled out and that becomes at rest so that is static charge which is very harmful in some places for example we might have seen that uh, vehicles getting fuel so vehicles when it is getting fuel the fuel which is coming out from the pump, uh, from the nozzle of the pump, can produce some fire because it, it produces some ion. And already the vehicle will be having some charge. So this may become a static charge and that will become an hazard. So much we have to know about this electrostatic charge. So what causes this on board ship is loading and unloading in a tank. So the loading and unloading, steaming, when it is uh, we are using steaming, water droplets can produce some ions, forced gas freeing. So the gas freeing, it has to be done in a particular pressure, like cargo tank cleaning, the water should uh, be used in a, in a pressure in a forced in a pressure if it is if it goes beyond that because of the movement of that water into the tank that will produce some uh, static charge 
sampling the equipment, using some uh, equipments to get the sample. So that equipments may produce some ions. So, and fire extinguisher, fire extinguisher nozzles, when it comes from the nozzle in that pressure, it may produce some static charge. These are all general causes of electrostatic charge on board ships. So how to prevent it? So we learned what is static charge. We learned what causes the electrostatic charge on board ship. Next, we have to know how to prevent the static charge. So the prevention of electrostatic charge. So by using tungsten copper heavy wire used for grounding and bonding. Suppose this is a tank. So this is a tank. The, this tank is having this type of a nozzle. The nozzle is being grounded here. And uh, the nozzle pipe is also grounded here. And the tank is also grounded here. So whenever there is a static charge that will dissipate it to the ground. This is the one method uh, how to prevent the static charge. This is called bonding, grounding. So different diagrams are shown. Mm, so this is the pipe, which is nozzle is getting grounded, the pump getting grounded, tank is getting grounded. And uh, these are the different bondings and grounding. First point, liquid conductivity augmentations, relaxation, flow speed reduction, purging, and inert. So inert gases, gases are used, that is, uh, incombustible, so uh, gases are used, do not get ignited, so using of inert gases. Instead of water, H2O crude oils are used, residual bottom cleaning without any dust particles or anything, the, res the residuals can produce ions, so that has to be cleaned. MSB board is having a bonite rod, the bonite rod is made up of butyl rubber, Whenever there is a charge, static charge in the MSB board, the butyl rubber uh, will observe the charges and it is a very good insulator then that will not uh, return it back. So it keeps it with itself. So it is an ebonite rod in MSB board. And general protective equipment for uh, some extent, when we go near to the pipelines, the pipelines which is carrying fluids also can produce some static charge the movement of uh, fluids in the pipe, that frictions between the pipe and the fluid can produce some static charge. So general PPE can protect us for some extent and anti-static cleaning. So there are some methods how to prevent the electrostatic charge. So some of the methods are discussed here. Tungsten, copper, thick wires are used for bonding and everything like conduct liquid conductivity, agmentation, relaxation, flow speed reduction. What is the speed at what pressure the water is used to clean the tank? So that is very important. Purging is the uh, freeing and the gas freeing and uh, using inert gases. Inert gases is uh, for non-combustible. So, Instead of water, H2 crude oils are used, residual bottom cleaning. At the bottom, there is some residual, so that it has to be cleaned properly. So what is the methods? How to clean it without static charge? Must measure what is the charge inside. A bonite rod in uh, MSB board. So MSB board consists of the butyl rubber rod, very high insulating material, so which absorbs the static charge. So general protective equipments and anti-static cleanings are also used. So next is about the 